I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, I'm a much bigger crowd than I was actually expecting it, but uh, I see some, some faces from way back when. Uh, I can't introduce everyone, so I won't try to. But uh, again, I'd like to thank everybody for being here, uh, the early family. Um, at this time, I'd like for Dr. Measures to come up and uh, give an invocation. Will you join me as we pray? My Father, we gather this morning to dedicate a sign for the Pasadena Police Department Firearm Training Center in memory of a fallen hero, Les Early, a Pasadena policeman who lost his life in the line of duty on the 5th of November, 1993. And Father, this morning I ask that his family, his friends, these fellow officers will feel your comforting presence during this moment and Christmas holidays. Thank you for mayors and councils through the years that have provided this remarkable complex for the training of officers. Only Houston has a complex even comparable in this area. This is more than a mere sign we come to dedicate. It is a sign of the dedication of the officers who use this facility to become proficient in the use and accuracy of their firearms, their vehicles, and to provide specialized training for the SWAT team. May all who view this sign be reminded of the wonderful police department with which you have blessed this community. Father, I ask your continued blessings on Chief Thaler, his capable staff, and upon every officer in the Pasadena Police Department during this Christmas season. Father, bless them as they gather with family and friends to celebrate the birth of Christ. Protect them from harm and endow them with wisdom and courage during these trying days. Bless these moments and this time in the life of our community. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. At this time, I'd like uh, to introduce Chief Mike Thaler. Chief, would you come up? Chief Thaler has a few words you'd like to say. Thank you, Gary. I want to also welcome everyone here today. It's, it's really overwhelming to see how many people have come to help us dedicate this sign. It's an, it's an important event. It's, it's important to all of us here and carries on a tradition of uh, this community and how it takes care of its, <coughs> its uh, police department and its officers. You know, I've heard it said many times that uh, Pasadena is uh, probably the largest small town in America. And so although we got 150,000 people, we are very much a community who cares about each other. And I cannot tell you how much um, or how special I feel the relationship is between the, the community and the police department. You're always there when we, when, uh, when we need you, and we try to be there for you when you need us. And that, that relationship is something that, that uh, I know all of our Pasadena police officers take very, very seriously. And the respect and support that you give us is always felt. And especially in times when we lose an officer, and as it was when we lost less. Just, we just passed the 19th anniversary. And talking to folks who knew Les so well, and talking about how friendly he was, how outgoing he was, um, how he was always willing to help everybody. And they talk about how palpable the pain still is, and seems like just yesterday. 19 years, uh, it, it's unbelievable it's been that long. But in talking about taking care of the police department, our community, and our city um, council and, and mayor, decided um, back in 2001, July of 2001, to rename our training academy or our firearms uh, facility after less. Not only in honor uh, for having uh, to pay honor to the service he gave and for our loss of him that time, but also to commemorate when they were thinking about what we could do for less. I think most of us here know that Les was very much an individual who excelled in firearms training and made sure that he was, he was one of our firearms trainers and he did everything he could to make sure that our officers were proficient and make sure that they would be as safe as they possibly could. Les was passionate about that. From, from everything that I've been told about Les and the training that he did, uh, he wanted to make sure that everybody was as good as they could possibly be. And he took that responsibility seriously. You know, in looking back, um, Les is one of those rare officers. Uh, you know, when someone used the term hero, that truly is, is, is true about Les. 
He was always the guy who wanted to be first in the door when, they, when SWAT had a warrant. He was always a point man. I think he wanted to take that risk upon himself. And if, if there was someone who was going to be hurt, he would rather be him than his partners. And I, I know that that is not lost to many of the officers who ran many warrants with him. And the day that we did lose him, it was, it was um, certainly one that will never be forgotten by any of us in the Pasadena Police Department. So with this sign today, though, I want to thank all the donors who, who contributed to making this happen. And this is another indication of how the community supports the police department. The sign is paid for with, with private funds, not public funds. These monies were raised by the officers here, working with the community, doing raffles, um, doing um, fundraisers. For all of you here who helped contribute or, or, or contribute in any way to seeing this sign be built, I really want to thank you for all the members of the Pasadena Police Department for what you've done to, again, show honor to Les and to remember the police department and for all those officers who day in and day out sacrifice for you and it's indications like this that remind them how special that relationship is and I really um, cannot thank you enough for all that you do to make sure that we stay in your hearts and that the, the early family is not forgotten. I, I will tell you this, the only thing I regret about today is the fact that the matriarch and patriarch of the early family are not able to be here with us to see the sign dedication. I wish we would have done it just a few months earlier. Unfortunately, we lost both Lillian, Lillian and Harry early, earlier this year. But I know that they'll be smiling down and they'll smile when we unveil that sign. I think it's very special and for those who designed it, uh, I want to compliment you because I've seen it and it re you really did a fantastic job. Thank you for that, and thank you all for coming here to help dedicate this sign today and making it that much more special. Thanks. Gary. I believe now Mayor Isabel would like to say a few words. Wow, what a great tribute. Uh, each and every one of you being here this morning. Uh, it is certainly an honor and a privilege for me to be here today to dedicate this sign to the uh, Less Early Firearms Training Facility. We all knew Les, uh, I happen to know, uh, I knew Les well, I thought. Uh, this sign on this facility commemorate certainly one of our fallen officers it is a fitting tribute, fitting tribute, as Les served as the police department's firearm training officer when he was killed in the line of duty November the 5th, 1993, at 20, 28 years old. Wow. Years later, uh, Les is uh, still remembered, who is competent, kind, had integrity and dependable. As one of his officers has said, <coughs> you were glad when Les was your backup. If you'd been in the Army, you'd always want him protecting your back in the foxhole. His memory certainly lives on, not just in our police department, but in the city and in our community as a whole. The proof of that is here today, the dedication of this sign. And as the chief has said, with the collaboration and the efforts of many, this sign was funded with donations through fundraisers hosted by a number of groups, including the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce, Citizens Police Academy, Alumni Association, many of our officers, as well as businesses, employees, and individuals in this community have all donated for this project and have reason to be here today. This sign will be seen by officers from over 40 agencies who come to this facility to train each year. It is one of the busiest facilities, home to some of the most crucial training for our officers. It is a facility well worth the hero's name that it stands for. And that is why it is fitting let the name on it be less early. Thank you all very much for coming. 
At this time, I'd like for Ian Early to come up and uh, say a few words. Ian. Hi, well, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who made the sign possible, all of the donors and all of the people who organized it and all of the officers that contributed to it and the support that the community has always shown, uh, my mom and I and my family, uh, it's always meant so much to us and we really appreciate it. Uh, when I found out that I was going to speak at this dedication, I sat down to try to figure out what I was going to say and uh, I, had, I was having a little bit of trouble uh, putting my feelings into words. Um, I know how, how I see my dad and I know how I've always tried to emulate uh, everything that my dad was and that he did, uh, but how do I articulate those feelings to you? Um, and then I realized that we honor my dad every day uh, when I'm with my mom at home talking about him, uh, when I'm with my family uh, telling stories, uh, we honor him. So I realized it shouldn't be too hard to do that now. Um, I'm, at the, I'm at the point in my life now, I'm about to graduate from college, and uh, the decisions that I make are starting to hold a lot more weight than they used to. Um, when you're younger, everything's, everything's planned for you, uh, but once you start getting closer to graduating high school, you know, you have more decisions that you're faced with. You know, am I going to go to college? What college am I going to go to? Um, and now that I'm getting closer to, to getting my bachelor's degree, I'm faced with, with many more decisions that I've never been faced with before. And I always miss my dad very much, uh, but it's, uh, that feeling's never more palpable than when I'm faced with a new decision. Um, I just, I, I wish that I could talk to him and ask for his advice uh, whenever I have a new decision or, or when I'm faced with a new situation. Um, I, I don't have very many memories of my dad, but since I was a young boy, I've always been around family that, that tell stories about him. And so I have that, and um, I, can't, I can't physically ask for his advice, uh, but regardless, he gives it to me uh, through the stories that my family have told me and that my mom have told me. Um, and I found that I've, I've become a student of those stories and that I, I very meticulously analyze you know, what my dad did and, and how he was and how I can apply that to whatever, whatever situation I'm faced with at the time. Um, and throughout, throughout the stories, um, I've, I've realized one thing that I've found is that uh, if something didn't come easy to my dad or uh, he wasn't, uh, it was hard for him at first, uh, he would excel at it and he would make it a point to excel at it, uh, whether that was in sports, which he loved, or any other facet of his life. Um, he, when he was in the academy, he had a tremor, and he was afraid that he uh, wasn't going to be able to pass the shooting exam, and so he practiced every day, and, and he shot every day, and not only did he pass, but he became the firearms instructor. Um, my dad was loyal, and was excessively protective of the people that he loved. Uh, when, when he was in Pasadena High School, uh, one of his cousins, was his teacher and um, she had a new car at one point and um, she came to school with it and at the end of the day she went out to the parking lot and uh, found that all four of her rims had been stolen from her car and uh, somehow my dad found out about it I don't know how and the next day um, she was in the classroom and a student came in carrying all four of her wheels and put it on the desk and apologized to her and um, dad, uh, I'll leave it to your imagination whatever tactics my dad employed to uh, to get him to cooperate, but, but throughout all the stories that my family and that my mom tell me um, and that my dad's friends tell me, uh, one common factor that I've seen in all of them is that he, he really enjoyed life and he, he loved to have fun. Um, and whether that was playing beach volleyball or joking with, with my mom, which came naturally to him. Um, and and I've, I hope that I can enjoy myself and enjoy the people around me just half as much as, as, he, enjoyed, as he enjoyed his life. And ever since I was very young, I made it my goal uh, to be just like him. And, um, and whether that be the way I handle my responsibilities or the way I treat women like he treated my mom. Um, I, when I was 19, actually, I matched his hairstyle. I had my own set of stripes. I don't know if you remember, he had stripes when he was in the academy. Um, a few weeks ago, a pastor at my school said something that I believe sums up my dad. Uh, he said, honor is given, respect is earned. Uh, my dad earned the respect of my mom, he earned the respect of his family, his friends, and his fellow officers, and he earned the respect of his community. Um, someone else who's earned my respect is my mom, and I just want to thank her now for how strong she's always been and, and what she's done for me because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it uh, if it weren't for my mom. And I also, uh, I'm so grateful to God. Uh, at times when I wasn't going to make it, uh, he never abandoned me. And uh, he never failed to show up in, in very real and very evident ways. 
and I'm just grateful that I have the hope that I'll see my dad again uh, because of Jesus Christ. Um, the earth is a better place because my dad lived on it. Um, about a year ago, I was driving through Tomball, Texas, and I was going uh, 65 miles per hour in a 35 in a 30 mile per hour speed zone. Um, <laughs> My mom's going to love this story. <laughs> but I, was, I was going 65 and a 30, and uh, I saw the blue and red lights behind me, of course. And, um, and the officer came up to the side of my car and asked for my license and, uh, and my insurance, and I gave it to him. And uh, he gave it back to me, and he said, I knew your dad. Uh, I trained with him, and he was a good man. And uh, uh, just go, go ahead and have a good day. And I was like, thank you, Dad. Um, <laughs> That, that's not the point of the story, though. Uh, that, I said, thank you, and he said, no, thank you. And that, that happens to me so, so often, not getting pulled over, but, I, uh, but I, I meet people in just the most unexpected places that somehow my dad's managed to touch. And I, think that, I believe that the reason for that is uh, because of the way that he made the people around him feel. I think that people felt good when they were around dad. And um, every, every once in a while, I'll have a chance to talk to a, a friend that he had or to a, a fellow officer. And I'm always honored. I'm honored when I get the chance to talk to a fellow officer, to a friend of my dad's. And um, just by the way that they talk about him, and uh, that this long after, after he's died, um, I, I can still sense the loyalty that, that people have to my dad. And I think it, it's very evident to me that that speaks to the fact that my dad gave something to the people that he cared about and to the people that he was around. Uh, my dad's life was one of love. Uh, he loved harder than anyone I know. And his life was one of sacrifice. His first year in college when he was playing football at McMurray, uh, my grandfather called him and told him that he needed to come home and help support the family. And so he did. It wasn't even a thought for him. Um, and uh, he sacrificed time to be with my mother and I. And at the, at the end, he, he gave the ultimate sacrifice, uh, which just like the rest of his life, wasn't even a thought for him. And uh, this sign, this dedication means so much to myself, to my mom, to the early family. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's a piece of wood or plastic or whatever it's made out of. Um, and it, it means so much, but if you want to honor my dad, uh, do, it, do it with your life and uh, the way that you live your life. Live it um, in a way that it doesn't waste the sacrifice that he gave. And uh, live, it, live it in a way that, that you love the people around you and that it makes a difference in the community. And that, that's how you can honor less early. Thank you. You like play basketball or anything? Sir? You like play basketball or anything? Football. My gosh. Doesn't like making you feel short. Uh, at this time, I would like to call up Lieutenant Craig Goodman for some presentation of gifts. While he's coming up, I would like to let you folks know that this project happened because of him. He started it. And while it has taken us some time to accomplish our goals, uh, he has seen it through uh, to its completion where we are today. And I would personally like to thank him for the efforts that he's uh, made and the persistence that he has shown to continue and to finish this project. So, thank Craig. You. Thank you. Good news is I'm not going to ask anybody for money today, so um, I, I would too like to thank everybody, and it's hard to name everybody who, who helped with this sign, but uh, y'all know it, and, and I appreciate everybody's help. From this day forward, every individual that passes through this gate should have no problem understanding exactly where they are. Patricia, 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 Craig, on behalf of the Pasadena Police Department, we would like to present you with the, the mock-up model of the actual sign that's being dedicated today. That is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You.
thank you again for everyone who contributed and I want to thank Craig so much for organizing it and, and for all of you who came out and I know it meant so much to our whole family and Les's friends and my son um, to see how many of you came this many years later and uh, I just I can't tell you how much that it really means to us and it it touches us and we love you all we're you're always in our prayers and um, we're proud of you thank you, thank you.